Hey everyone, I just got a notification from UPS that a package has arrived. I think I know what it is. It should be two low-powered RX460s I bought from a friend. So let's go outside and see if they're there. Right. <gasps> yep, there they are. Hot damn. Actually, that's not enthusiastic enough. Hey, Tech Shinji. Okay, gotta put the last GPU on the GPU pyramid and hope. Shinji! Hopefully it is. Oh no, 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 oh dang it. Oh, Rick, you distracted me. What's going on, man? What, what happened? Hey, my happy scream's kind of broken, man. Give me a happy squeal because I just got two more GPUs. Oh! You got you got two GPUs, man. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. You got two GPUs. Yeah. Whatever you do, don't tell him they're RX four sixties. They're too low end for him. He's all top tier. Okay, so let's see what my friend sent me. And by the way, down below in the uh, video description, I'll have a link for Tech Shinji's channel. Whereas I'm playing with old RX 460s that are low power, he likes to play with like the leading edge 3080s, 3090s. He's also played with uh, water cooling a lot as well too. So he has water cooled mining rigs. So go ahead and check him out. He's also a founder for the Misfit Mining Discord that I'm part of. So, this guy always bubble wraps stuff perfectly. Here, hon, have some bubble wrap. <laughs> okay, and he did say there was an aftermarket fan on one of these. So, this looks like to be nitro. Let's see your oh. sap. sap Sapphire Nitro that has an aftermarket cooler on it. It has an Arctic fan on it. And looks like it has a secondary fan header which wasn't used. So this will be interesting to see how it works. Then again, these don't usually use a lot of heat. So this really should be perfectly fine the way it is. And I'll probably leave it the way it is. So that's pretty cool. Let's put that to the side. So there is one other. Wait a second. I only ordered two cards. What did he send me? I got two boxes here. <laughs> oh wait, one's probably the factory co cooler. That's right. He sent me the factory cooler in case I wanted to switch it on back, but I'll see how good the Arctic works first. <laughs> and yes, here's the other. I believe they're the same actually, Sapphire Nitros. <laughs> yeah, they're the exact same thing. So I got two of these. One like that, one like that. So, interesting aftermarket cooler. I never knew they had made anything like that. So let's plug this in to my four gig rig and get the bios changed on them. And go figure, I started shooting this video and then I had to stop for like a week because I completely forgot that I was out of PCIe power cables. So this just came in so we can continue making the video. Nope, that wasn't enough. That was enough. <laughs> Power cables direct from Parallel Miner. 24 inches. They're uh, 6 pin to 6 plus 2 pin. So now we can continue onward. So let's get these out of the way. Bye. Let's get out to GPUriser.com. Not sponsor, but that's what I use. Risers. Crinkle, crinkle, crinkle. The cable, I do not need the little PCIe thing since I'm using a RevTech board. No, get back in there. Oh, it was stuck onto the foam. There we go. 
Oh, this is still the old box. I have another one that has the newer logo, which is basically the same thing. It's just shadowed. Ain't that pretty. Okay, let's go install them onto the rig. Okay, so I got turned off. I completely forgot I had this other motherboard sitting up top here with nothing on it. Just doing a little bit of Varus hash mining on the CPU. So, oh well, turn it all off. We'll get it out of the way. There we go. And they have little lights. I think it's supposed to be more view from the back, but yeah. Okay, let's go over to the computer, do some uh, BIOS modding, and get them hashing. And of course, what's the only annoying thing with RepTech motherboards, when you add more cards onto it, it jumbles everything around. So now I got to redo the flight sheet and everything. So here's our two new cards. They're BIOS modded, all set to go. So let's go back to our flight sheet here. And this one, where the heck is it? Xeon, 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 Marvel, Carol. There we go. This one. On the 570s, we're running ET. No, actually, no, wrong one. Where's my Raven one? There we go. That's the one I want. Bye. Uh, we're doing Raven on the 570s, and we're doing on the 460s, the low power, we're doing Ergo. So I need to fix the GPU IDs here. Let's update it. Let's send that to the moon. And let's see if it's happy. Okay, so after playing with it for hours and clearing this out, where's my mouse? There it is. Clearing these out for hours on end, I think I finally figured out what my issue is. Now, I have three 460s here. The top one and the bottom one are the new ones I just added. This 460 is my original, but it's actually not a 460. It's actually a 560, but for some reason, Hive OS reports it as a 460. Well, the difference being a 560 has 16 compute units, whereas an actual RX 460, one generation down, only has 14 compute units. So that's why I can never get the mega hash rate for it to match this other third one. So that was my first misunderstanding. We can see that on the 560, we're getting 31.21 mega hash. Now this is the weird thing. I can run the clock and don't forget, all these are BIOS modded. I can run the core at 10, 1050 megahertz, 850 millivolts on the core and 800 millivolts on the memory controller and then run the DDR5 RAM at 1900 megahertz to get 31 mega hash. And that's using SK Hynix RAM. Now, both of these other ones are Micron RAM. For some stupid reason, which I can't figure out why, the cores don't like to go over 900 megahertz. They should be almost the exact same. That shouldn't matter with the compute units but it does for some stupid reason. So both of them are running at 900 megahertz. The bottom one I can run, excuse me, I can run the core and the memory controller at 875 millivolts, whereas for some reason this top one is being a pain in the butt. I need to run them both at 900 millivolts and the memory at only 1450 megahertz, whereas I can run 1500 megahertz that's really slow for GDDR5 memory. I don't know why, but it is working. I'm getting 27.5 and 28.5 mega hash out of it. It's not bad. But the other thing is, too, the, um, where the heck is it? I keep losing my mouse. The M AMD mem tweak on Micron RAM is usually a ref number of 30. It doesn't work for some reason on this. I have to tone it down and do 20. And that's how I can get these speeds. If I put 30 on it, I start either getting invalid shares or just flat out crashes the card. And then it has to reboot and it's a pain in the butt. It's not stable. So that's the difference between an RX 560 and an RX 460. There's not too much speed difference, at least on Ergo. These are great Ergo cards. We're only talking about three mega hash, but you need to keep this in mind. If you get these, there is this weird thing 
that RX460s have to be really clocked low. It's just the way they work. Well, that gives me a total with my three, well, actually, sorry, two RX470s and one RX570. That's giving me a total of 40 mega hashes on uh, Ravencoin, Kapow. Now, for these three combined, I am getting 87.44 mega hash. So, not bad for a low power system so far. Well, okay, the ergo part is low powered. Raven, there's nothing low power about it. It's a very, very core and voltage and current intensive algorithm. So if you like this video, thumbs up, please. Please share this video around the mining community. Someone might be able to find these numbers useful. Come visit myself, the founders, and everyone else over at Misfit Mining Discord. The link will be down in the video description. And I will see you on the next video.